So the grooming process for me was very gradual. It began with needing money, needing money for rent. Shauna Sexton says she was 25 years old when her boyfriend of four years forced her into a life of sex trafficking. Looking back now, I'm like, wow, I should have seen all of that. I should have run. If I had a support system around me, I, maybe I could have. But he did isolate me away from my family. This was Sexton before she ran. She says she was strung out on meth, weighed under 90 pounds, struggling to stay alive. She says she beat the odds because instead of arresting her, a police officer who she encountered took her to rehab. I knew that I, there was just nothing more that I wanted in a better life. So surrendering to God and everything that he wanted for my life was so easy because I had done that for a man for all the wrong reasons. Her harrowing experience changed her. And now Sexton works with nonprofits, big and small, raising awareness. And it is happening in our backyards. And if people think it just happens to those girls, to the, the girls in inner city, they need to wake up. Joanna Scheip is an activist, chairman of the Stop Traffic Walk. She also works at a grassroots level, educating residents in her Cave Creek neighborhood. When you think that a girl is worth over $100,000 a year to a trafficker, they're going to invest in them. This is not like selling drugs. You know, a kid gets some drugs, they use up the drugs, the drugs are gone. These girls can be trafficked anywhere from 8, 10, 20 times a day. So their value is very high. Sunny McLaren has a son in the sixth grade in the Cave Creek Unified School District. She was pretty surprised when she received this notice for a meeting about child sex trafficking. I'm definitely glad that they are bringing it to our attention and offering some education about it. I really don't know the signs for trafficking. I don't know how best to protect my children. And of course, in this day and age, children are online a lot. And so any kind of guidance the district can give us as parents, I'm willing to listen. It doesn't matter if we're talking about metro areas or rural areas. Every jurisdiction has trafficking crimes and has the potential to have trafficking crimes. Michelle Rucker is a strategic initiatives coordinator with the Arizona Attorney General's Office. She says Arizona ranks 14th in the country for reports made to the National Human Trafficking Hotline. That does not include reports made to local law enforcement or other hotlines. And look at these statistics provided by the AG's office. The average age of entry into sex trafficking in in Arizona is 14 years old. In 2020, an estimated one out of six endangered runaways reported to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children were likely child sex trafficking victims. Of those, 88% were in the care of social services or foster care when they ran. What we know is that a lot of this crime actually occurs over the internet. Social media is the true hunting ground. Um, so if you're a parent, if you have children, if you even have children that you know you work with or that you care for, you know, social media is really where we need to turn our attention to and making sure that we're putting up guardrails to keep our children as safe as possible from online predators. The crime of human trafficking is something that we absolutely have to talk about. With the Valley preparing to host another Super Bowl in 2023, Rutgers preparing parents, teachers, and potential victims with meetings like this one. And Rucker agrees education is a community effort. I'm not trying to say that people should be worried about it necessarily, but at the end of the day, if it's just the AG down in downtown Phoenix putting out information and community members don't take a hold of it and don't act, act on it and don't think it's important, then it's not going to get out to the community. Cape Creek business owners are getting involved. Tiffany went hosted an informational meeting at Buffalo Chip where Sexton shared her story. The hope in sharing my story in smaller communities is to help them realize when I was being trafficked, I was trafficked in North Scottsdale. It's very real in our neighborhoods. It's very real online. It's very real in families. There's no extent or border for traffickers. It just, it happens in every neighborhood. Anita Roman, Fox 10 News.